I'm impressed. Boy, he hit that button. Thank you very much. Good evening, and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting that happens to be on the third Monday rather than the second uh, of the Hartford Plan Commission. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And uh, our next item of business is to review the minutes of November 14th. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns as regards to the minutes? I'll so move, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion by Scott to approve. I'll Second by the other Scott. I just wanted to do a Scott Scott thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Appearances. We have appearances, and if it does not uh, have, uh, well, actually, because we don't have an open uh, discussion here, anybody wishing to discuss on any topic that would appear before the city is more than welcome to come up to our podium. Uh, state your name and address. You have three glorious minutes. Anybody? Third call. Hearing none, we'll go to item four, discussion and consideration of a signed permit application for Modish Kids Boutique, 28th East Jackson Street, and we have city staff here doing most of our items here, and that is city planner Justin Drew. So this first one is for Modish Kids Boutique, uh, 16 square foot sign. Pull within, the mic up just a little there. Within the signable area. Uh, the one thing that's a little interesting about this is this is, will have a rear LED halo glow illumination, uh, and they show it in the bottom picture. We have a couple others around town that are like that. It gives kind of a, an interesting a little bit more muted um, illumination rather than being really lit up. So it's kind of a nice look. Staff recommends in favor. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or any questions for Justin on this? If not, I'd look for a motion to approve. Uh, I'll move to approve. Uh, Alderperson Kohler, second. second by Tony. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, discussion and consideration of an annexation petition. This is on County Trunk Highway K and Shower Drive. Tax key number T6 underscore 048 dash 600 dash B for those keeping track. With that, our city planner, Justin Drew. This property is located across County Trunk Highway K from Landmark Credit Union, just north of the terminus of Shower Drive. Uh, so the Regans are selling it, and they have a uh, approved offer with Vickney and Associates uh, CPA, uh, which wants to purchase the property and build a new building. They need city services in order to do that. So um, this is the proposed uh, petition. It's a newly created lot uh, earlier this uh, last year, I guess now. Um, the city purchased lot two of the certified survey map for a future fire station. And so the Vickneys are looking to purchase lot one. Uh, in addition, there is space to extend shower drive. Uh, and that would look something like that. Um, and it would preserve access to the Gillig Pit property to the east, which we've seen previous proposals for residential development. That one's run into a few hurdles. But um, we are planning for its eventual return. So um, that's kind of how the street might look. Uh, we're not really reviewing this at this time, but the Vicknees have hired an architect who's put together a plan for the building that they're proposing. Uh, very attractive looking, uh, similar to some of the other recent office buildings we've had um, going around town. So assuming this gets approved, they would be back for a site plan review. I like that car. <laughs> um, uh, so you actually have to pay for a license to put specific cars in. Uh, I asked an architect that once, so yeah. Mm -hmm. The property is contiguous to the city. One thing that the state noted in their review is they thought it created a town island. Uh, that's because the previous property went over to that red line, which is actually... Um, it's not quite in the actual County Trunk Highway right-of-way, but when the city did the certified survey map to create these two lots, they also broke off that area between the red line and where lots one and lot two start and dedicated that to the county for their road right-of-way. So um, the property just to the north, where it says unplatted lands, would not be a town island. It would be a long balloon on the end of a string. So. Um, 
I understand based on the maps that the state had that they thought it might create a town island, but it does not. Um, Super. Er everything looks uh, in order for the petition in terms of accuracy. We have sewer, water, and electric service available <coughs> to the area. Um, believe that I'm expecting valuation of approximately 450,000, which would generate annual city property taxes of approximately 2,500. No impact on school services, a very minor impact on police and emergency services. Uh, the proposal is consistent with the smart growth plan. Uh, the Regans have requested B4 professional office zoning as a temporary zoning, which assuming the annexation got approved would then there'd be a future hearing to make that permanent. And it is within our city sanitary sewer service area. So staff recommends in favor. Thank you for a point that uh, Dennis Riggie did inform me before this that he will be abstaining from this vote, correct? Correct. Thank you. Okay. So knowing that, any discussion by council? Pretty I'll straightforward. Move and I do have a question. Okay. Didn't ask for a motion yet, but go ahead. I uh, thought you had to have one to talk about things, so that's all. Um, lot one, that's yes. what we're talking about tonight? Correct. And, and that does not include any road right away, correct? Correct. So the terminus of that cul-de-sac will be on lot two? Yes. Okay. Oops, one too many. Yes. Perfect, thank you. That's all. Okay, and that'll be discussed then too at our hearing next uh, after this meeting as regards uh -huh. to what uh, Scott just brought up? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Motion to approve. <laughs> I'm going to sit there. <laughs> Yep, yep. Okay, Tony and uh, uh, Scott, so uh, for a motion to approve. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number six, discussion and consideration of a site plan, the Redmond Company at 1570 East Sumner Street. This is the location of the previous culvers that obviously burned down. They're proposing a 5,564 square foot building with three tenants. Uh, the one on the west side would have a drive-through, um, and both the one on the west and the east side would have a space in the front for small patios. Um, meets all of the setback requirements uh, of the B5 district, as well as the lot coverage requirement. The building would be a single story structure with a facade composed primarily of gray modular brick, brown vertical composite siding made to look like wood planks, numerous doors and windows on the west, south and east sides. North facade is the gray brick and service doors. The original design included anodized aluminum sunshades over the windows. Um, a little similar to what Starbucks has. It does a, I mean, it's not a huge building, so there's not a massing issue particularly, but still, it's a fairly square building, so having those kind of broke up the, the squareness of the building. Uh, but the architects took them off because they've had um, an issue where ice fell off of them in other locations, so they're working with uh, the, some architects and manufacturers trying to see if they can address that issue. Uh, until then, they won't sign off on them as being included. Um, so I believe the building is quite attractive and approvable as is. However, I've got a note in here that uh, if they can address the sunshade safety issue, that those should be added at a later date. There is still space to add them as it was, it is a little more attractive with that. Uh, there's another picture of it. 37 parking stalls, all the driveways, existing driveways remain, which access the private roads. Uh, queuing for seven vehicles in the drive through um, Not a lot as far as grading and utilities go. Uh, I have a couple comments from the director of utilities on water and electric. And the wastewater director is requesting additional details about the, about the proposed sanitary connection and will require a clean-out manhole, uh, which is a common thing that we've been doing on a lot of these redevelopments where they weren't in place. Uh, I include these for the packet, but it's primarily a staff level discussion between the developer and those directors. Uh, the landscaping plan, they're going to remove the existing landscaping and replace it with five large deciduous trees, five smaller deciduous trees, and 20 ornamental shrubs uh, and hundreds of perennials. 
Overall, I think it's a, a good looking plan and should be appropriate for the building. Uh, photometric plan meeting city requirements was submitted and they show a dumpster enclosure meeting our requirements as well. So staff recommends approval subject to installing the original proposed sunshades on the exterior of the building if the design and implementation issue identified by the architect is addressed and meeting the utility and wastewater director's requirements. Any questions for staff? I do. Oh, okay, go ahead, please. Um, do we have any? Who, do we have anybody? Any ideas of tenants who's looking in the building? Yes. Because 37, having three different businesses running there, and 37 parking spots doesn't seem like there's quite a bit enough. Uh, so there is. When I spoke to the representative from the owner of the building, um, the one on the west will be a Qdoba. Uh, the one on the center is uh, un claimed yet, I believe, or they're in final negotiations and so weren't ready to release who it was. And the one on the east is intended to be a Jersey Mike's. Uh, so um, it does it does meet our code as far as parking requirements. Um, is So we can't really require more than that. And given the space constraints they've got, it would be difficult anyway. Um, but most of the I've never been into a Jersey Mike's, but I understand they're fairly small. There's not a lot of seating. And most people are stopping in, getting their subs, and then leaving. So it's a fairly quick turnaround. And with that drive through at Qdoba, it should be adequate. Yeah. I was just curious because you know, you're looking, a lot of times that's going to be meal time, right? You have two, two of the main anchors right there are going to do it. Now, judging, you guys can see what's currently happening already with the, um, with the culvers. We've always had overflow going into the... Um, into the huge parking lot behind them. So um, uh, just just curious on what they're thinking of it. Like I said, I can see during lunch hours as well as maybe around dinner, that might be a little, little congested. But. The, the Qdoba, if, I mean, having been into a Jersey Mike's and a Qdoba, it, it's from my perspective a little strange that the Qdoba got the drive-through and Jersey Mike's didn't oh, yeah. because the Jersey Mike's would be more of a transient type thing. It's kind of in and out or, or a drive-through. And the uh, the Qdoba, whenever I've gone to a Qdoba, I ate it there because you, you usually go in and you have to make a bunch of selections, right. which is not necessarily conducive to drive-through. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was a head scratch for me. I mean, if they think they can do it, that's fine. But uh, m my concern is there along with uh, Joe that um, it's going to be a little tight. Go ahead, Scott. Um, my, my concern also follows traffic flow, and um, in the early 80s when this was a Hardee's, um, that driveway that is on the south side of the property nearest to Highway 60 yes. is an extremely bad place for that. And if we allow, again, another facility to come in with the same problem, I think it would be best if we could move those parking spots and the entrance the entrance to the north and the parking spot south and line up a little bit better with the other cross section um, going into the what is the anytime fitness facility um, I don't know if that matters but I think traffic on highway 60 without a frontage road um, is going to be extremely bad and I think I agree with Joe and the mayor that at those busy times that's probably not the best place to be um, so if they want to try to flip it, because I can see people getting their whatever the restaurant sells and moves out into the non-city street, a public street, which is a private street, um, I think there's going to be a problem. Okay. So that would be my concern. I mean, I'm a fan of both of the restaurants. Right. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And I don't want them to go away. I just just want to make right. sure that it's safe for. Yeah. The, I would just like to see their walls converge. <laughs> or whatever that third one is. I mean, it's it's having the two and then having to approve this without knowing who the third one is, and you've only got 37 parking places. Right. And then you have employees. It's like yes, yeah. correct. Also, so, right. But, um, I mean, I'm excited about what they have planned for it. It's just absolutely just just concerned. Sure. Like I said, see what's happened with Culver's, what Culver's looked like prior to, the, to their accident that happened. And luckily enough, we have frontage roads and where they rebuilt, there's a lot more space. So, but you still see the line up there. Um, and these are two, these would be two very popular stops as well. Yeah, sure. So just trying to keep, and we yeah, only, keep people safe. And we only control Highway 60 
access. We don't control any of that private street. And, right? and correct. Um, you're, you are correct when, when you take the employees into account unless they have worked out something with the other. I mean, you're going to you're going to have ten cars chewing up employees at least. Yeah. You know, probably six and four uh, between those two, and you don't have the third entity yet. So now you're over a dozen of those spots are going to go to employees. Oops, you know, and, and that's probably a low number. Uh, so that's again a concern. Did you have something, Dennis? Go ahead, please. Uh, did the discussion of traffic flow come up at staff? Uh, the city engineer and I discussed it a bit, and um, we felt that it would would work, but I certainly understand where your concerns are coming from. I, I don't think we're going to get quite the traffic flow that you, Culver's created. Uh, it, Culver's is a little unique in that regard, um, short only of like a Chick-fil-A or something. But uh, I certainly understand where you're coming from. If the plan commission wants to add any conditions to the approval, uh, I mean, you obviously have the option of asking us as staff to go back and discuss this with them and then bring it back or you have the option of approving it with some recommendations or with conditions well two one one has to look when you're looking at jersey mics they make a great sub i enjoy it it's a nice change of pace but, but it's not like we have a shortage of sub places mm -hmm. uh, so in that respect they're coming moving into a very con, con, uh, 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 compressed type of uh, competitive situation but with kidoba I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, great, a Kadoba. I mean, more so than most. When you really consider the fast food or, you know, something quick, re there's really only one in town, with, you know, that has that type, of, like with a drive through and, of course, that's Taco sure. Bell. And uh, uh, I obviously I enjoy Taco Bell. I enjoy everything you can see. But uh, <laughs> the, the Kadoba is, is something that I think will be a real treat. It is going to draw more traffic than you, you might expect. Yeah, you might be right. Because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of excitement about that particular one that I've heard. Uh, so uh, I'm glad they have a drive through because that's going to mitigate parking, but it's going to also create, uh, uh, like Scott said, you know, some, some real lines. And we don't have any control over that private area. So it's, you know, once we open that box, it's, you know, we're, we're going to hear about it. Did you have something, Scott, that you wanted to say? I thought you... No, I, I agree with um, both Joe and Scott also. The traffic flow on there, getting off of Highway 60 onto that private road there is going to be tough. It always is. And that has always been a congestion when Culver's was there as well. So it's a concern. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a better idea to address it now before. Sure. Correct. So, um, I mean, you could have the city engineer and I uh, address it with them and try and come up with some, some different options. You could say that you want that driveway moved uh, to the north, um, which my only concern with that is as you're coming out of the drive through making a, a full U-turn would be pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. But I suppose then they could just go to the east and around to that exit. Um, but we're, and and again, uh, like, like Scott mentioned, you know, we're, we're, we're not trying to hurt these businesses. We no, want them we, there. Right, yeah. We're looking, what we're trying to do is in the long term, yep. trying to help them yeah, because no, we know the history yep. of this lot. The, and, there is no public access to this property. It's all off of private property, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So... Once we approve it, we're done. So it's up to you if you want to put in specific recommendations or just leave it to John and I to work on with them. My suggestion, and you know, I'd like to know who the third tenant is because that's definitely going to affect parking. I believe they're looking at a... Um, well, you don't have to say it if you're not allowed no, to. I mean, well, I, no, I can't. I don't, I don't know who the business is, but I believe that they're looking at, at a haircutting type place. Okay. All right. So I, it's not another restaurant. Let's right. Go. Okay. But if you got four chairs there, you're going to have that's eight cars. You got four people uh, uh, that, that are cutting hair, and you got four people that are going to be in those chairs. So now you got eight more cars. So between uh, the the uh, uh, tw you know the, the ten people I've talked about, and I eighteen, I chewed up eighteen. So you've got. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're shrinking the pie, if you will, on the number of places that are open, especially for one of these that, that's going to, you know, at least that I, is going to be very popular. I'm sure Jersey Mike's, you've seen all their ads, they're going to be popular, and they don't have a drive through which means you've got to go in, which means you have to park your car. And, and are, are we going to create a problem for them 
versus somebody with a drive-through because all of a sudden uh, Cadoba, who does see people who will have a drive-through going through all of uh, the, you know, you've got the eight taken up by the hair place. Uh, uh, Jersey Mike's going to get starved for parking. You know, and, and this is something that, like Scott said, we, we can't address once once we get by here. So I, I don't know what the feeling is of the the uh, commission here. But I was I was shocked when I saw the plan that the the arrows on the drive-through are the way they are. That you come in from the north and head out to the south. I thought for sure it was the other way around, but it's not because obviously we don't drive European cars. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, know, you know, so I. I I'm not an architect and I'm not a site planner, but we've been sitting here long enough and I think if you just flip the building, that might work. I'm going to drive through on the other side and move this one over. Just bit. flip the entire plan, the inside of the plan and I, we, still do, we still haven't addressed the south entrance, but I don't know how they're getting off the property unless they have agreements with the other site because the other site could put barricades up and I believe there through. are existing I, access agreements I hope so, between them mm -hmm. but yeah. you never know where yeah. we have a new site so I would like to see staff take another whack at it and bring it back possible that yeah. any, any way we could maybe talk to the to the owner of, of I mean, if, if you think that's it to, to have them <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, I can talk directly to the. I, I would have a meeting that involved the owner, the architect, the right. city engineer, and I to okay. try and address and these maybe issues. Maybe they could come and, and address. Again, we're trying to help them. I, I don't want to starve one of those businesses out of there because their customers don't have a place to park. Yeah. And we want them all. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll take them all. <laughs> right. Let's just make it best for everyone. So, is there enough I'll, room for a parking structure on that? No, I don't know. I'll make, I'll make a motion to table. I guess is that that's fine. Well, yes. I don't know that it would be to table. I think you'd make a motion okay. to send it back for continuing discussion. Discussion. Of, I'll, okay. I'll make that motion. Okay, that's fine. We got a motion for uh, continued discussion with uh, uh, the, the city planner and his crew, along with the property <clears throat> owner, to deal uh, with to uh, uh, traffic look at, concerns. Yeah, taking and, the, uh, taking the, yes, and, and, okay. and traffic obviously to make sure that we have it, primarily because of the fact that we're we're concerned about the number of spots and uh, the direction it's going, and the fact that we get one swack at this or swack at this. It's this, and then the city council. And uh, it's all private property, so we lose our ability to assist. And trust me, they're going to be complaining to us uh, if that starts bottling up. So, you have a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Joe. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. And last, we have a three minute discussion with Tom Hosta. No. <laughs> Discussion and consideration of a concept plan for next generation housing <laughs> project. To that, we go back to city planner Justin Drew. So there, there's a long history with this. I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of it. I think enough of it has been publicized that most of you are aware of it. But um, we've Tom and I looked to develop this land, which the HADC owns for industrial purposes for years. We've had studies done. Given the grades and some of the other issues that we're dealing with, we just we had a lot of trouble making the numbers work and getting big enough um, developers interested, interested in developing a big enough spot to make um, the infrastructure investment worth it for industrial. Uh, at the same time, the, most of the big businesses in Hartford are telling us that their biggest need is additional housing of all types uh, and that they're dealing with a lot of turnover in large part because they're pulling from so far away and they can get them hired and they can pay to train them up and then they take that training and go someplace closer to where they live. So um, they're looking to get more housing and um, then the mayor and Tom were also working kind of on a housing concept for a few years now to try and see if, what could be done to deal with some of these uh, infrastructure costs and see if there's some way to skinny down the cost of, of a home. Um, the county got involved, realized it was a county issue, and decided to put $10 million aside for to try and address this as what they're calling next generation housing. Um, Hartford, uh, for this site, was approved for $2.4 million uh, as part of a pilot project. So we're going to get almost 25% of those funds, uh, potentially. To, uh, to work on this project and move it forward. 
Uh, we've used some of the funds already to have a detailed housing study done. It's about 50 pages long. It's actually very interesting, though, so if anybody wants it, I'm happy to share it. Uh, I'll probably put it up on the web page in the near future. Uh, it found very strong demand for all segments of housing, from the most basic rentals up to uh, especially houses um, you know, like 350,000. Um, and the one note that I will mention specifically from the uh, that study is it said the greatest need for owner-occupied homes that it is 200 to 350,000, but most homes being built in Washington County are 350,000 and up. So we've got a, a definite gap here. Uh, so Tom and I also hired R.A. Smith to work on a master plan and a concept plan for this development. Uh, we've had numerous meetings with um, kind of a project management team and city staff, and uh, also discussed it uh, at some county meetings. And this is the concept plan that we've come up with, and so I feel like it's time to um, bring it out and show everybody, get some opinions, some feedback um, before moving any further forward. So normally I, at annexations, we talk about projected valuations. Um, the projected valuation, uh, started doing it at concept plan stage two. Projected valuation for this the subdivision would be about $75 million. Um, so it would be pretty significant. Um, it's on 60 acres and 344 total units are proposed. Um, 43 of them. So this kind of shows where it would be and we would connect the road from the existing innovation way next to um, Zeller Trucking and what used to be API to the subdivision as well as to the east uh, by the Dream Center. And then it would also connect to uh, State Street. Here's just a little bit closer in. 43 single family homes with street loaded garages, another 20 single family homes with alley um, gar facing garages as well as the ability to have accessory dwelling units above those garages that they could rent out. Um, two family to four family side-by-sides would comprise 65 of the units and they would kind of go around the north and west and southern edge of the owner-occupied area of it, uh, as well as townhouse style condos, 32 units at the southeast, towards the southeast corner. Uh, these are usually three stories, two car garage in the back, um, living area in the front, and then most of the living space is on the second floor and then the bedrooms on the third floor. They're very common in other metro areas, but they haven't been as big here, although they've got them in Oak Creek um, as well as some other locations. Um, 16 unit, two story garden apartments that would comprise a total of 128 units of apartments. Um, and that number is very purposeful. You, you want to get over 100, ideally to 120 plus units in order to have the economics work so you can have on-site um, property manager, you can have on-site um, maintenance staff, um, and that helps. All of our newer ones that have that, we have zero problems with. Uh, so it, it's a, a very important feature of it. And then beyond that, we showed at south of the new East-West Road, a 36 unit, three-story apartment. So much of the southern portion of the property is wetland or identified as stormwater management area, but there is space for a small pocket park, recreational areas. Uh, what we're proposing, though seeming very dense, actually is a total of 5.7 units per acre. So no more dense than uh, like Bridalwood is really, or a lot of the other subdivisions. You're seeing three main access points, one on the west connecting to Dodge Industrial Park, one on the east that would connect to the west, western industrial park, one to uh, State Street. And then there's also, if I go back, you can see there's two other sort of triangular shaped properties, one to the north, one to the east, uh, that could connect to there as well. Normally, uh, and uh, some of our earlier iterations showed a north-south road from State Street kind of down along that section line to the Innovation Way extended. Uh, but given that we've got um, Zeller Trucking, 
we don't want to encourage a lot of industrial traffic to go through a new proposed residential subdivision, so we changed how it's oriented. You can get through, but it doesn't encourage it. So we, we want to try and keep that industrial traffic kind of going out the other way. But it creates a very quick commute for people who lived here if they worked out in the industrial part. <clears throat> so um, obviously there's a lot of slope north to south and we try and take advantage of that slope where possible with the road layout in order to allow for some exposed and partially exposed basements, um, try and reduce grading costs as a whole. There's a lot of other pieces involved with that, this in terms of how it would be financed and structured and um, since it's owned by us, it's not, we're not responding to a developer. The city and HADC are potentially the developer um, and we would probably send it out to RFP for a builder. But the main thing to get in front of you today is the overall concept plan, the layout, the breakdown of units, uh, your thoughts on that and your thoughts on the proposed development as a whole. Any comments for Justin? I'm going to let him call. So, so you, as they raise their hand, you're oh, welcome okay. to pull up. Go ahead. So a question I have is last um, finance and personnel committee meeting, and I think it went through the uh, council meeting too, is they went through and I know they approved uh, the zoning, rewording of the zoning. Has that been completed? And has that been approved? It's been approved. So this, um, yes. Uh, and actually, it's a separate item to some extent, but it will impact all of you. Uh, I got approval from council with some funding from the county to completely redo our zoning code. So we've hired Grafen Associates to do that. We had our kickoff meeting on Friday, and we're getting them some information. And then uh, I did ask them to compress their timeline. It was originally a 12-month process. So as I understand, that was approval to spend money to go through and rezone it. I didn't think that we had saw the, the, the rewording of the rezoning, so it has not been approved at, in, um, as a new, the new document and a new zoning? Well, so what the council approved is for us to go through the process and take the expense of redoing the zoning code, basically deleting the whole thing and starting over, more or less. Um, it will come in front of you numerous times to ask for your input as to how the new zoning code be oriented and some details and some overarching concepts. Um, and that both plan commission and council will have a large role to play and obviously in approving that ultimately. Uh, but that'll be six to seven months out before that comes forward. So all that's been approved so far is entering into a contract with a consultant to, to, reword the zoning. to, to work on okay. it. I just wanted to make I just wanted to make sure that was clear because I, um, I was I was under the same understanding that we did not have a zoning approved for this property at this point. So, right. Um, and some of what we're trying to do on this is not really allowed by our current zoning code. So, uh, especially the accessory dwelling units above the garage is one example, um, but some of the others as as well. So, we're trying to our code is very old, forty years old, and it's more band-aid than anything else at this point and so we thought we were at the point where unrolling that ball of yarn was going to be tough so let's just start over right so can i keep going you guys go yeah go ahead. Oh, actually i gotta roll. I'll, I'll be on a roll um so a couple of different things that we talked about um first and foremost we talked about some of the different zoning on there um, my personal opinion is it's it is too condensed it's too much going on in one area I know when we went through um, and approved for the rewriting of the zoning and hopefully um, what we would see pre presented to us, and we've asked it for several times, is more single fi family homes um, on the list. As I looked on what you guys are proposing, you have 12% of the single family homes. And I remember President Heggie in our meeting um, did request that we do the majority of the property with single family homes. And uh, I don't think 12% was quite what, we, what um, was in mind when we asked for that. Uh, you know, and then some of the other things that you talked about in there was, you know, we want to make next generation homes, sounds like affordable homes, so to speak, um, you know, three to $400,000 uh, $400, homes. That's half of your, you know, that to me, I don't find, I don't find that as affordable. I don't find that as a lot of your, 
lot of your employees in that area in the Dodge County, Washington County Industrial Park, um, looking at homes that you know at that at that uh, value. So um, I, I don't, like I said, I think it's it's a little bit it's a little bit high. And the question that I have, and I've heard it floating around, and it may be rumors, but uh, what kind of housing is this? Is it, it so we build these houses? It sounds like we're gonna make it affordable for a builder to build these homes. It's gonna be affordable for the buyer to buy these homes. Is it affordable, basically affordable housing is what we're proposing in this area. You know, affordable housing is such a loaded term and it means something different to everybody. So, but the idea, I think the best example is after World War II, you had a lot of housing available to people coming back from the war. And there was this huge boom in Cape Cods and ranches and stuff in the late 40s and early 50s. And a lot of it was for first-time home buyers. They were not fancy, but they were well-built. And then in the 70s, you had a big boom of tri-level, bi-level type homes. And again, because there's a lot of efficiencies there, um, and they, they appealed to those first-time home buyers. The, what's gotten so out of whack is with how high infrastructure costs are, as well as building costs, um, builders aren't incentivized to do simpler homes anymore. Um, these are going to be like 1,250 to 1,500 square foot homes, by and large. A couple of them, would, some of them would be a little bigger than that. Um, but nobody builds that anymore. And so we've had numerous discussions, hundreds of hours of talk about what, how do you build that, and is there a market for it? And there's, this is what the market is crying for, and this is probably the only way to make it happen, because otherwise the builder's just not going to do it. I mean, we have, we have three subdivisions right now that's out there waiting to be built on, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, this would be the third one. And each time it comes through, and the point, that, you know, the point we talk about and what we're looking at, and what are we looking at for, what do we consider affordable homes, and who's looking for the jobs within, within the industrial park, right? And a lot of them aren't the management, a lot of them aren't the senior management, um, sitting in the $300,000 home, a lot of them are your line workers, a lot of them are your, your starting new families. Um, you know, so I, again, once, once again, I, I just, I think there's too much in this area, first of all. It's too condensed, it's too, there's too much variety in there. Um, and I don't, I, I think you're trying, I think what we're trying to do here is we're trying to fix everything in one area, but we're not gonna get enough of anything. So I think, in, in my opinion, um, I think we need to we, we need to revisit once again what is the goals of this of this property and which directions need to go. Well, so the problem is if we go to mostly single family, the, the cost of infrastructure is the cost of infrastructure. It's just how do we split it up? How do we cut that pie? And if I go to mostly single family, I'm cutting it a lot, a lot fewer times. And so each lot is responsible for more of the infrastructure cost. Mm -hmm. So instead of it being like 30,000 per lot, it's 50,000 per lot. That works contrary to the concept of trying to bring those prices down. Um, as to your question of is 300,000 affordable, it, it is kind of a shocking number, especially going back to when we all bought our first homes. Uh, but we've talked to a number of bankers and we've talked to a number of people about what the average couple that works in the industrial park makes. And believe it or not, that would get a lot of them in there. I've got a, a, a point. Uh, I, I don't disagree with Joe as much as this is going to sound like because I can understand where you're coming from. But I, I guess I look at it through a little different lens. And that is a person might actually start out in uh, an apartment end up buying a single family home for an alley and then when they retire they can go to one of the condos. In other words, you, you literally have a microcosm of, of an area that has people staying in that very area because they have neighbors, they have community, and, and this is how a lot of those communities started, like you had mentioned, actually even pre-50s, but going back into the 30s sure. of, 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 of dense, uh, thing. And, and when you come to dense, 5.7 units per acre uh, is, is not as dense as you would see really in the 80 by 100 foot lots that were put up in, in the cities like Milwaukee and, and West Dallas. Uh, uh, this does give you a little bit more room than that. Uh, but but I really do see that the fact that you might have the same person as their family grows going into it. I just wanted to make sure that I, I had the numbers right. 
for the single family units, you had 43 units that were actually uh, uh, having a separate garage type uh, driveway and then 20 beyond that would be alleys is that so you have a total of 63 or yes is 63 that, single family okay if you take 63 divided by the 344 units that's actually over 18 percent not 12 as far as the yeah. uh, the it, single family still far under the I, I understand but uh, you, you know let's uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to go of what one council person specifically asked for I'm looking for something that we're we're looking at in able to 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 be able to solve the problem and I think that's been talked out because again Tom and I started that what we're going on six years as to when that was and so uh, that's one of the things that uh, you know we're, we're looking at so um, just wanted to make sure that you know we had some balance there so other comments or questions <clears throat> this is an entirely city-owned property correct uh, yeah the city owns it on behalf of the HADC correct and the other two triangles that you talked about um, are also no, those are privately owned. Those are privately owned. Yeah. Um, so one last question is needed. So I know we're talking about subsidizing and helping make it affordable for the builders to build this out and make it, um, but what about the homes? Is this going to be, is this going to be affordable living? Is this going to be government subsidized? Is this going to be that type of a home structure? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah and one more comment, uh, just for those who are a little unfamiliar with it, especially Scott, who joined the Planning Commission just last year, the, the ratio that Joe was referencing um, in our smart growth plan, we have a, a goal ratio of housing of 50, 55% single family, 30% um, multifamily, and 15% two family. Uh, it doesn't require us to try and meet it with any specific um, development, but just as we look at the totality of them, we kind of use that to help guide us. Uh, I will say the other two large subdivisions that Joe referenced that are under proposal, uh, one was 100% single family and the other was uh, about half and half between single family and two family. Okay. So we should balance it back out over time. Okay. But if there's any specific, I mean, obviously, for Joe, you'd like to see more um, single family. Any other comments as far as the layout or the distribution of units? Anything specific you'd like to see changed, or added on to 30-story building, something like that? I, I agree with Joel. Um, I think it's a little busy, a lot of uh, different types of housing in there. Why an alley, though? I don't understand the alley concept. Uh, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be, but those are a little narrower lots, and you get to the point where to have a house that's wide enough to have the living space, it's difficult to get that garage street facing. Uh, the other part of it is to have that accessory dwelling unit. It makes it a little easier to create that accessory dwelling unit. Um, our concept behind that is um, if we're trying to deal with affordability, it addresses it from two issue, two, two different directions. One, you've got a very small, like 400, 500 square foot, um, probably efficiency apartment above a garage. So that's not going to be very expensive, but it's enough money that it's going to help the, whoever buys that home um, drive down their mortgage costs and help them afford their, their mortgage. Uh, so that's kind of where we're coming from on that. They would also be very picky as to who they allow. Uh, I, would you know, I don't imagine there would be a lot of issues with their renters because they live right there. But uh, that, that's kind of the concept behind it. Um, it's possible as we get further in that that becomes less tenable. I know the uh, public works director does not love that uh, for the alley. We could look at making that a private alley um, and that they are doing these in some other communities, but. And we have some alleys. Well, you would know that yeah. if we have alleys in Hartford. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we haven't done any new ones in uh, oh, probably 70 years. Is this okay. what the next generation is looking for in home buyers? I mean, uh, a mixed type of housing because when I bought my house I wanted to be in a single-family residence sure. I didn't want to be mixed with apartments or anything like that yeah it, this is much more common you. no <laughs> this type of mixing of uses is much more common um, a, a little less common in southeast Wisconsin than some other metro areas but it is uh, you're seeing it more and more uh, and even it's more common in our own community than you might think of uh, gateway estates which has probably the second most expensive set of 
single family homes in the city. Um, had, there's 72 apartment units in there and there's also some two family. Red Oak has uh, two family housing and then an apartment complex just to the south of it. That's also one of our more expensive single family subdivisions. So. Um, we do, we've never mixed like this many different uses at once, but there's a number of them that have like three different uses or housing types. Scott. Um, I, it, it's innovative. It's um, all of those things that uh, I guess everybody else talked about that, you know, there's not as many single family, but there's way more duplexes than some might have. But um, I think we have to keep the big picture in mind is that it's overall the entire community. Um, we don't want to make pockets of multifamily in one area and all single family in another because then we start, to the mayor's point, start splitting up our community. Um, the, the other thing that um, I always look at too, and this isn't even, we're not even close to that, but snow removal, um, terrace widths, all of those types of things that eat up property. Um, people need to realize that snow is going to get pushed. Um, you know, we've had a pretty good year this year, but snow is going to get pushed. And also that you're building or buying next to an industrial park that's been there for quite a long time. Right. So those are the other things that when summer's heat comes and stamping and fabrication places open their doors, there is noise. And I guess we're just looking at heading those things off yeah, before the absolutely. before it gets I live a block and a half from where all these trucks are banging all the time absolutely. so I it's you know it, it for us you, you know things and, balance out I and guess. you knew that when you moved in. and I knew it when I moved in you bet <laughs> so, there's also a lot that do knew and know when they moved in and they'll scream about the railroad tracks yep. and they moved in before it right yep. I mean so you, you have that it's gonna happen even if even with this and I looked at that okay they know what they're moving into but that's fine when they do it but then you just always this problem and that problem, so um, I just think it's just it's just too condensed, too too much too much going on in there, and I think it's trying to solve solve too many issues where none of them is really going to get touched. That's just the wrong, just the right amount of issues. Is what I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> so what the, can't be solved. What the, uh, what, this is discussion and consideration. Are you looking to, to vote on this to move forward? Are you just looking for uh, what what's the feel and you're getting some comments? Yeah, I mean. It, we're at the stage where I don't have to have a, a motion and approval for anything. Okay. Uh, but if someone feels like they want to make a motion to either change it in a specific way, to approve it as is, um, you know, any feedback you give us is helpful because we're going to get to the point. I mean, we've spent money on this, but we're getting to the point right. where we're going to spend real well, money. I don't mind the money we spent uh, as regards to uh, having to change it. I mean, but but actually, I'm going to make a motion, to, and, and you can vote it up or down, to move ahead with, with what we have because I know the amount of work that's put in, and I've been a part of it. Uh, people who I respect have been a part of it. We, I've, I've seen this from many different angles. Obviously, just you know, I have had a lot of conversations as regards to this, and uh, I, you know, in talking to the business community, what they're looking at, and to minimize our investment that the city is is doing. We're, we're putting effort into this. Just the fact that you're spending time, obviously, is an investment uh, because that costs money. But I, I really do think that for what we're trying to do and what I had pointed out before as far as this actually becoming a part of its own neighborhood that where people would be able to stay in, I think that makes it. So I'm going to move that uh, the, the next generation concept plan is, is something that we move forward with out of this committee or commission to, to take that next step either with zoning or with the city council. So however we I'll second that. So we have a motion by myself and a second by Scott Hankey. Any further discussion? Just one. Please, go ahead. Comment. Um, this does seem to be a location to do this type of thing. Uh, I guess I would consider it an experiment of sorts. Uh, it's something uh, on this scale with, you know, all of it, what's going on in there hasn't been done, uh, especially in the city of Hartford. Um, is this the place to do it? Maybe it is. So uh, I think uh, from what you guys put forward, you know, maybe this is something that uh, we can make work. Uh, however, if we do go forward, I guess we're going to find out. So. <laughs> well, well, once it's built, it's done. Whether it works or doesn't work. If it doesn't work, now we have an issue to 
yeah, contend with. Well, we, we, we will have an issue, but, but with the need that we see all the time, every apartment complex is completely full. Yeah. I mean, and, and with the, the want that that we hear, I hear, I know you hear, and, and other people on this board might, or this commission might hear is, is that what are you going to do something about housing? I mean, it is an issue that comes up on a regular basis. So I, but I, I respect what you're saying, uh, Joe, because uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but I don't know that we're going to get to perfect. Is this so. the final concept? I mean, is this the final? No, yeah, and I just was going to comment on that. So, right. I mean, at concept plan stage, they've looked at grades, but they haven't really dug in and started doing infrastructure. And uh, there's always some changes between concept plan and preliminary plat, which would be the next major stage. And that would go back to plan commission and council. Uh, there'd be a development agreement. So there will definitely be another kick at the cat. But before we get too far into it, if there are major road changes, if the whole board uh, plan commission says lop 100 units off or something, you know, that is helpful to know now. So this is an, if we vote in favor of moving forward with the concept, we get another shot at changing the type of delivery or I mean type of housing in, within this zoning or this area? There will be another opportunity to, to look at it, yes. Okay, and, and again, please understand, some very valid points are being brought up here uh, that, that uh, keeps that discussion going, which I think is a good thing. Uh, uh, it just again depends on what lens you're looking through because I think there is a legitimacy to all the points that were brought up But with that any other comments hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, uh, aye. opposed no no, okay, so we have uh, We do have a no. I, th I think Joe you're the only one I voted no correct. correct. I think okay uh, Wonderful. Thank you very much with that. We stand adjourned to the call of the chair. Thank you. Thank you, you. <clears throat>
Good evening and welcome to a joint City of Hartford, Town of Hartford Planning Committee on this Monday, January 16th. I'd like to call the meeting to order and uh, first of all, uh, thank those uh, in attendance here, especially our friends from the Town of Hartford for their patience because we did have a Planning Commission meeting go long and uh, they were kind enough to uh, uh, wait us out. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Uh, with that, we uh, look at the minutes of September 13, 2021. Now it says deferred to a later date. Is, is that uh, you're looking for an approval on that to be deferred? Yes. Okay, so we're deferring that uh, as per the request of the city plan uh, director. And uh, all the proper appearances were sent, or uh, proper notices were sent, I should say. We do open all of our meetings for appearances. So in our vast studio audience, anybody wishing to appear to address this joint town city plan committee meeting, uh, you just come up to the microphone and give uh, your name and address. You get three glorious minutes. Any requests? Anybody? Any appearances? Hearing none, we go on to item number four, discussion regarding petition for direct annexation by unanimous consent submitted by Donald and David Regan for approximately 1.36 acres located northeast of the intersection of County Trunk Highway K and Shower Drive. Tax key number again. T6 underscore 048-600-B. For those keeping track, this was unanimously uh, voted in the affirmative by the plan commission meeting which preceded this. And with that, I will turn it over to our city planner, Justin Drew. Uh, so Vintney and Associates CPA, which is a Hartford business, has been growing. They've grown to the point where they don't have space in their existing facility. Uh, can't expand there, so they have an accepted offer to purchase this uh, pending the annexation, and their proposal is to build a 4,000 square foot office building with room to expand. Uh, they need city sewer and water. Uh, so the annexation area that is proposed is on this map is shown as lot one. It's 1.36 acres. Um, lot two, this CSM was created in 2022. Lot two is the area that the city of Hartford bought for a second fire station. Uh, and that is not in the city yet, but uh, the city does own that and it controls it. Um, one of the things you'll see in your packet is that the Department of Administration that reviews annexation petitions thought it, that this would create a town island. It does not. Um, when we did the certified survey map, we broke off that area um, on a, just to the west of lot one. Uh, if you've got a color copy in yours, I don't know if you guys do or not, but um, we dedicated land to the county for County Trunk Highway K that was kind of shown as requested to be dedicated. So that creates a small um, balloon on a string. So the property to the north of lot one is in the town, but it is connected to the town, uh, town hall actually through this right, road right of way that's owned by county trunk or by the county um, so it's uh, adjacent to the city at the northeast corner and it we found no dis uh, discrepancies on the petition sewer water and electric are available to the area we anticipate that it build out the of the first phase it would be valued at approximately four hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, it was difficult to figure out the exact value of this lot because the CSM was done so recently. So we had to go back and look at the value of the lot prior to the, the split because the county doesn't show a value for either of these lots. And then we just did a ratio, a percentage of what lot one is to the overall former lot. And so we believe the assessed value is around $10,000. The county will let us know exactly what it is. Uh, but so the city would be required to pay the town town taxes on this property for five years at about $112 per year. No school services impact, uh, very minor uh, impact on police and emergency services that would be more than offset by increased taxes. Smart growth plan calls for commercial development, so this is consistent. Um, uh, the Regans have requested a B4 professional office zoning. It is within the sanitary sewer service area. And normally this body just hears about this. They don't take any votes, uh, but something was picking at my brain and I was looked at the 19, is this the 89 agreement? 
89 or the 91 agreement, and there is a provision that in Section 22, this body will give an advisory vote on this annexation. So uh, you will be voting this evening. So that's all I have on that. Wonderful. Thank you. Go ahead, Dennis. Mayor, as a point of order, I will be abstaining from this vote due to okay. personal interest. Understood. So recusing from the vote, uh, Dennis Reagan. Okay. Gentlemen, please. Questions, comments? Yes, please. Yeah, I, I've got a question on how the valuation works. So what you, what you did is you took this percentage of, of the lot, lot one, how big lot one is, and compared it to the entire parcel? Yeah, so before we did the CSM in total, it was about, let's see, two, three, four. 4.2 acres. So I basically figured out what the value had been before the certified survey map split those. And then I took the 1.36 acres divided by the four point to get a percentage. So that's, that's how I'm not establishing the value. I'm just trying to estimate it for your so information. The so the county one, sets the value is what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, the, the town sets the value. No, the, um, Actually, yes, the town would have uh, set the value last year because it was in the prop in the town all of last year. Can I buy that parcel for ten thousand dollars? Because I buy it today, all day long. <laughs> yeah, I'll true. give you fifty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A valid question. One point three six acres commercial property on Highway K. You got the valuation set at ten thousand dollars. And again, I don't set the valuation. I was just estimating it based on its. So who? So the town sets the valuation. Well, yeah, I mean, the assessors set the valuation. The assessor does. But the, and so, that's already been done, is what you're saying, because that was last year. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, do we have that dollar amount? No, and that's the problem, is I had to kind of impute a dollar, uh, an estimate, because there was nothing available on the county. You know, the, the, reason, okay. the reason I bring it up, because oh, the, it's the, town, the I, town gets a small percentage of that for the next five years. I agree. And I think the numbers are, like, way off. If, if that's the case, can we stipulate, then... So we don't have uh, to have uh, another meeting just just to do so. Can we find out what that number? Is? Because I, What's you are, selling for? Well, well, that's that's what I, what I'm saying is is, yeah. is for the uh, the dollar amount as regards to. And I don't uh, have access to that. You don't have access to. It I yet? don't have access to his question, which is what is it selling for? Okay, that'll um, be public record. It will be when it closes. Yeah. But at this point, so, I don't know. So can we can we just base it on that value when it? Close. Well, the, the selling price is not necessarily the assessed price. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I would like to know what it was assessed at. Right. Uh, and, yeah, the, so all I could do is take what it was assessed at before the CSM and then do a percentage of it. as an example, if you sell your house and, and you manage to get $40,000 more than asking and all that, the people who are going to pay the taxes on yeah. the house are not going to pay what they bought it for. They're going to pay it for yeah. the assessed value. Well, it, and so what I'd like to try... Up, but eventually, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but what, what I'm saying is, is I would be interested, and I'm sh yeah. I shouldn't say I'm sure, I, I am in belief yeah. that the assessed value which you guys set, that the county has that we, we didn't have access to yet, is going to be more than ten thousand dollars. So, and, and I don't and, think we have it on this portion because this portion has been split off. So you know, we have it on the. It was two hundred forty thousand for the for the entire thirty five acres, right? Or was it two hundred forty thousand on just this little piece? Because then then this says then the value would be like. Where are you coming up with that two hundred forty thousand number? It's public record. Uh, in 2022, it was $240,300. In 2021, it was $230,800. For which? I have it back for 10 years. You want, you want oh, yeah, this? Yeah, no, and, and I, I didn't. But I don't know what portion. Mm -hmm. Was it the whole quarry and everything else, or was it just this? But, and, you know, a couple thousand dollars or even $10,000, one way or another, it doesn't matter because we only get like 4.3% right. or something. Right, understood. Yeah. But, 10,000, it's, it's $10,000, that's way off. So the quarry is not part of this. The quarry has a different owner. Well, then, then if you take, then if you do your calculation, it's going to be 30% of $240,000 then. So and, no. And, but wasn't it, there was a house on that property at mm -hmm. one time. Exactly. Correct. Yeah, and the house, the house value was separate from the lot. I just gave you the lot. Well, that's what the lot. That's just the lot. Go ahead, Dennis. So... so that $10,000 number should be more like 80. Okay. I, I'm assuming, and 
it's and, what and I, I would believe it to be that lot one and lot two made up the yes, two hundred forty thousand, and yeah. some of that was a house on it. So first you'd have to subtract the house. The house is already subtracted. How do we know that? It's what on the papers that I gave. Okay, gave him. Justin has it. Who, who is Gerald Ziegler? Jerry Ziegler? Yeah, he's the guy who looked that up for me. He's he's got an account, so he can get those numbers. Okay. In order to get those, for me to get those numbers from the county, I have to pay for them. I see. But my neighbor yeah. Jerry has an account, so he can get okay. the numbers. Okay. So if this, if the parent parcel is worth two hundred and forty thousand dollars, then land only. Oh yeah, that's right. Then um, it's interesting that it still shows improvement value because there's no improvements on the property. But, but that's, see, um, that's old. Well, yeah. if it's showing 240 with improvements, no, that, it's, one, it's, no, it's not. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm not looking at it. So I don't yeah, know. yeah. That, it's so, another thirty thousand for the improvements. So what is the date on that? It goes back ten years. Oh. 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17. You know, mm -hmm. okay. and. Like I say, yeah. I don't know. I absolutely agree. We want to be fair. Obviously, uh, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about the numbers. We need to find out what that property is worth, uh, is, is worth or if it was ever uh, uh, by the, the town or anybody, uh, uh, the county, whoever, I would assume it would be the town, actually looked at that parcel one that we're speaking about separately and gave it a value. Did okay. that happen? Uh, so, uh, sorry, I was doing some calculations. Okay, okay um, if this value is correct, the two hundred and forty thousand three hundred is what the parent property is worth. The before the certified survey map was completed, um, lot one comprises like thirty three percent of it, so it would be valued at more like seventy two thousand or seventy nine seventy eight thousand dollars. Sorry, so, so significantly more than ten. Yes, yes. But so my point is yeah. that yeah. I'm not deciding any of this. You're not deciding any of this. I was just, it's for informational purposes, and yeah. it was based on yeah. the information I was able yeah. to get. And I to just get. didn't want to be locked into that $112. Well, no, year. and you wouldn't uh, be. I agree. I mean, and, and yeah, you would so. not be. It would yeah. be based on the actual valuation at the time. This does make more sense um, than the number I was able to come up with. Yeah. So um, I, I think this is probably more correct. So you're going to have, a, again, a value of more like $78,000. That's what I came up with. And, and, and if we wanted to move, we could actually discuss it and, and just talk about whatever the uh, design, you, you know, passes with the designated price as determined by the value of uh, the lot, uh, the full lot, 33% of which is represented in lot one. And that's what we would be looking at uh, to make sure that they, because obviously if you're, if you're talking uh, what we said 10, so if we're, if we're looking at this, and going, uh, let's see, let me just tap it out real quick. I apologize in advance. Uh, let's see. Well, why don't you tap it out real quick? That would be great. Uh, Does the assessment have anything to do with the taxes that were paid for for 2022? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Tax oh, I mean, that should have. That's yeah, and what's weird is just on the, because again, I, I know what he's referring to, land shark, but you have to pay to get into it. So using the publicly available data, they just didn't have it up on their, their website yet. Um, but yeah, the, the assessment is what completely drives the taxes. So, but again, any decision made here or even at council doesn't lock in what that number is. The state statutes determine what it is. And so we have to go with the actual assessment, not what I guessed it to be. Yep. Good, good. So okay. I'm satisfied. Super. Thank you very much. Additional questions, comments, well, concerns? Will that be based on the 2022 assessment then? It would be based on the 2022 assessment. Right. And I think what part of what screwed it up is that there was that certified survey map that was completed. And so then you've got two parcels and the assessor just hadn't, I, I'm sure they got out there, they looked at it, but it just hadn't been um, put into the computer system that the county had at least publicly available at this point. And what we're, what we're looking at, at, at the, the discussing here, taking a vote, has nothing to do with the price, yeah. just so, yeah. so yeah. you're aware, and that yeah. Yeah. we will make sure, no, and you brought up a very valid point, we will make yeah. sure, obviously, that, that whatever that is, and if it's $78,000 or even more, depending on what we find out that uh, assessment was, then we'll, I mean, that's what we base it on, because that's the law that we have to follow. We can't just, you know, arbitrarily make up a number. I'm sure that was more for more discussion's sake. Uh, right. and, but uh, but I'm, I'm glad, I mean, it did seem like kind of a low number, so um, I will do some more research to try and confirm this before the council votes next Tuesday. Um, okay. But this, 
it's definitely works. Um, it, it seems more correct. Yeah, I, I, you know, I I think once the once it's rezoned the commercial, that value is going to go up even more. But that's we can't take advantage of no. that as a correct. correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are correct. Yeah. Thank you for knowing that. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? So this would be a vote uh, uh, on uh, regarding the uh, direct annexation by, by unanimous consent uh, for the property on uh, County Park K and Shower Drive. We uh, identify that on our map as Lot One. Uh, in favor of that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate your time. We stand adjourned to the call of the chair. Thank you. Thank you.